Welcome to the premiere of Talking Bad, uh, and for Breaking Bad's final eight episodes, we're here to send this remarkable groundbreaking series off in style. Tonight we're talking to creator and executive producer of Breaking Bad, Mr. Vince Gilligan, and superfan Julie Bowen. I am Chris Hardwick, and this is Talking Bad. Vince, welcome to Talking Bad. All season long, we're going to have exclusive interviews with the cast, as well as celebrity super fans, right here on this couch to help us say vamanos to Breaking Bad. Uh, there's so much to get into. Uh, Hank punched Walt. Jesse made it rain, millionaire style. The cancer's back. There's a lot to get through. We're going to give you therapy so we can get through this together. To kick it off, please welcome creator and executive producer of Breaking Bad, Mr. Vince Gilligan, hey. and the Modern Family. Breaking Bad superfan Julie Bowen. Um, so, really quickly, uh, you were on our podcast last week, yeah. and we talked about this. I think you set up the entire series in the first five minutes of the first episode. Walt says, uh, chemistry is the science of change, growth, decay, transformation. Yeah. You I, want to talk a little bit about that? You know how what? He's uh, it, it, it really was. That was kind of uh, implicit uh, in the pitch and explicit when I pitched it to the, to the folks that I work for at AMC and at uh, Sony Television. I was selling them uh, that this was a show about transformation, about a guy changing from being the good guy to the bad guy. So you're right. In hindsight, that was kind of the... Uh, the uh, the position paper, as, as it were. Do, and, and do you, episode. as Vince, still like Walt? Not so much, no. Yeah. <laughs> he's he's, uh, he's kind of a bad dude. I mean, that was the whole point of it all, but at a certain point, he's harder and harder to sympathize with, that's for sure. Yeah. So uh, let's talk about this episode that we saw a little bit earlier. What was the reason for starting with Hank and Walt uh, immediately with, with the confrontation and not holding that till the end. You know, we talked about it. My writers and I talked about uh, holding off uh, the realization on Walt's part that, uh, that Hank was on to him. But we figured, you know what? There's only seven after this one, and we got a, a heck of a lot of story left to tell. So well, I might as well, uh, you know, end, end this episode on, on, on that moment that you saw. Julia, are you rooting for Hank? Or are you rooting for Walt? I'm literally trying to like mine the subtext of everything he's saying <laughs> to find out what's happening in. You were staring at him creepily. I know. I'm like, what does he mean? Decay. I've got decay transformation. I, I can go on forever. Walt. Um, I root for Walt because I think, I, like you said, I, I'm sure as a writer and, and, and a creator, maybe you can as much anymore, but there is still something in that scene, in that confrontation. I'm thinking, I still want Walt to get away with it. I still want Walt to get away with it. I don't, don't, I mean, he kind of represents something that's animal in all of us and greedy, and it may be just in me, but I'm sure everyone feels this way too. <laughs> But there's this, when she shows him that room last yeah. year, the, the storage room full of money, and says, how much is, is, is too much? All I was thinking was, well, let's figure out how he can spend it, you know? <laughs> and let's, let's go on the vacation. Let's, let's put our brains together. Yeah. Get Saul on this. Let's get them to Morocco or wherever they need to go. And there's something very exciting because no matter what, he was always the underdog in the beginning. Yeah. And, they, and, and you gave him the cancer back. Yeah. How much yeah. more of an underdog yeah. do you have to be? No, you're right. Well, let's talk about the cancer for a sec, because yeah. until he says to, at, at the end to Walt, I, can't, I mean, until he says to Hank, my cancer's back, no one knows that Walt's sick, right? I mean, he's keeping it a secret from the family. He's keeping it a secret. We, we, we know. We know from him that drip, shot of him with drip, the, with right. the chemo. Yeah, yeah. 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 But uh, no, he is keeping a secret. Because think back to last season, uh, to season 5A, as, as we call it, as we and the lawyers call it, uh, was, uh, was, uh, he was uh, talking to his wife, and his wife said, I'm, I'm waiting for the cancer to come back. Right. So it's like, 
you got to think if you're Walt, this is the last thing you want to you want to tell Skyler because you don't want to see that that look of relief in her in her. But eyes. she finally seems content though when he says, "I'm out." You know, at the end of 5A, where she's finally sitting around the picnic table and it looks like she's kind of breathed a sigh of relief yeah. uh, before uh, Hank takes a fateful poop. Um, <laughs> like she, she poop definitely, she face. seems like she seems okay at that point. They seem like uh, they're they're kind of they're kind of getting back things. Or what do you think? You think I think she's into. I think she wants it too. And when he comes comes over and starts talking about the pine saw scented, da -da -da, and then says, "By the way, we should probably buy that other one." She's like, "Well, I have to." Oh, the one over by you know the location she loves. She wants it too. Like yeah. there's something in her. She is not her her transformation. Is is a transformation and as an actor, like, yes, I want to work for you, but it's it's <laughs> it is. She still loves this man. She still shares a bed with him, yeah. and there's still something there. And she still, there's something in her that wants to see. Can we do this? Yeah. Can we launder all this money? Yeah. Can we get to Morocco? Let's buy shoes. Right. This, this was Morocco. You, for some reason, you, you want them to be in Morocco. And I'm just I don't thinking know of why. a place that's like we've <laughs> seen in travel logs. Like, they don't really want to go to South America. Well, there, there's, so much that, there's so much for us to get through, and we don't have a lot of time because we only have a half hour for the show, and the conversation is just beginning. We want to hear from you guys at home. We're going to read your questions and comments and answer your phone calls. You can tweet us at TalkingBadAMC. Or pick up your second cell phone and call us toll free at 855 535 8800. Later in the show, Mr. Vince Gilligan is going to give us an exclusive tease about next week's episode. But first, you guys, Breaking Bad is ending, uh, and I don't even like those words that I'm saying, but the love for the show is stronger. Then, and thank you for Badger's devotion to Star Trek uh, in this oh. episode. <laughs> Let's look back at one of the series' baddest moments. We're going to do this from time to time. Check this out. For me, one of the baddest moments of the series was when Jesse was about to confront the two drug dealers. Jesse was getting ready to shoot these two guys who had killed Andrea's brother. Walter White runs over them with his car and gets out. And then shot the other one in the head. And then he turns to Jesse and he says one word, run. I was, I jumped out of my chair. I was like, wow. It was just, it was an incredible moment. And this is so typical in Breaking Bad fashion that <laughs> something so serious and so important is found out by a guy sitting on the crapper. I told Dean that he should take the crap before, and then we're out of toilet paper, and he has to tear a page out of the book, and that's how he discovers it. Hey! <laughs> he didn't go for that. Welcome back to Talking Bad. I am Chris Hardwick. I'm back with Breaking Bad creator, executive producer Vince Gilligan. Minor family is Julie Bowen. Uh, that was Mr. Brian Cranston, who, by the way, directed tonight's episode talking about the most crucial cliffhanger in Breaking Bad history. Um, so, obviously, the show is very heavy, but there are, there are humorous elements that you, you put in as well. Was that, was that a factor in this? And, like, he has to figure it out while he's on the toilet. You know what? We, we like subverting expectations, so you, you don't figure out uh, the biggest single uh, revelation of a guy's life is going to happen when he's on the john. And also, we do put humor in this show whenever we can because it'd be a very hard slog indeed watching this show if there were no humor, if it, didn't, if it took itself too seriously. But is it, as a, as a geeked out fan, I gotta ask you, is it not hubris for him to keep freaking leaves of grass on the back of the crapper? You know what? That's a, that's a really good no, It's that's right a, there with like road track and yeah. chemistry today. Well, if there's anything that's going to help a man crap, it's finding out his brother in law is a drug kingpin. He's been chasing the entire season. <laughs> He's just um, been helpful. I want to talk for a second about, about, yeah. about Skinny Pete and Badger. Mm. And 
a couple times, like a couple seasons ago, they're talking about Star Wars, mm. and then he's like, Darth Vader has a lot of responsibility. Yeah. He lost. He lost two of them bitches talking about the Death Star. <laughs> and then in this one, the whole reference to the pie eating contest. Yeah, but you know, I gotta wonder, and I read way too much into these episodes. Um, he, at one point, he goes, the, the Megilla berries or whatever, he goes, that's from Voyager. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that whether or not there's some kind of like meta level of going, where are we gonna stand in the whole in the in the pantheon of TV? Like, are we? Are huh. we is this gonna live on I always feel forever? A little ba I always feel bad when I see Skinny Pete and Badger doing things that suggest that they have talents, because I always feel like like when you see yeah. when you see Skinny Pete like yeah. playing Solfeggio. Skin Skinny Pete is a is a classically trained. Pianist and mime. Well, it just makes yes. you feel. It makes you mime. feel. It Charles makes you feel Baker. bad Charles about Baker, like, not actually what skinny. they could have been. <laughs> uh, we have our first call on Talking Bad ever. What is your name and where are you calling from? Hey, this is Rob from New Jersey. How you doing? My uh, question is for Vince. Vince, love the show. In the opening sequence, uh, flash forward, Walt seems to have some heavy weaponry in his uh, trunk. What could you tell us about what he's going to do with that gun? Well, I tell you that M60 in that uh, in that uh, in that trunk of his is uh, is one is one uh, badass piece of uh, military hardware, and you know uh, my writers and I were thinking of uh, Scarface because the original uh, pitch uh, for this series when I was pitching it to the powers that be was we're going to take Mr. Chips we're going to turn him into Scarface, mm -hmm. so we're asking ourselves, huh. you know. Uh, what would Scarface have? Scarface, uh, at the end of that movie, had uh, an M16 with a grenade launcher, uh, uh, and which is, you know, pretty lethal. But uh, M60, Rambo's gun, even more lethal. And you got to figure, uh, you, you, you go to the trouble of buying one of those in a Denny's parking lot, as, as we do from time to time. <laughs> you got to be, uh, you got to have some uh, serious uh, intent, uh, you know. To be using that thing uh, for. So, uh, Julie, th this is uh, this is actually coming from the internet as well. What yeah. do you think happened to uh, Walt's house when you see the beginning? Well, I, I mean, I don't think it was just a downturn in the local real estate economy. <laughs> that may be happening, but that I, I'm the timeline. We're about six months probably. I'm figuring right. ahead because that was his 52nd birthday at the opening of 5A. Right, right, and. So in no, in very short order, I think he got the heck out of there. They make reference to Europe, maybe Morocco. <laughs> um, I'm just saying it could happen. I think he did get everybody out, but of like uh, in the nick of time because clearly who, he's pissed somebody off because Heisenberg is there on the wall, and I think it has to do with Lydia. You think it has to do with Lydia? Lydia is the I hope loose we find out more. wire. All right, we only have a few seconds left in this. We're going to go to a quick commercial. We but we're coming back, back we after can... that. Yeah, we are. We're not Lydia. going anywhere. Don't worry. You can still talk about Lydia. You'll get your Lydia, and we'll talk about Morocco at the commercial break. Coming up, this man right here, Mr. Vince Gilligan, is going to give us an exclusive tease of what's coming up in next week's episode. We'll be right back in a few minutes on Talking Bad. Welcome back to Talking Bad. I'm Chris Hardwick. Walter White taught us that chemistry is the study of change. But one thing has remained constant throughout the entire series of Breaking Bad. The unique set of elements that work together to create this incredible show. So please sit back, relax, and respect the chemistry.
back. We're here talking bad with Vince Gilligan and Julie Bowen. Uh, Vince, why does Walt lie to Jesse about Mike? Just lies right to his face without blinking. Well, you got to think uh, if he admits it, if he admits the truth, what's Jesse going to do? You know, Walt's life is pretty good right now, albeit precariously. I mean, he's. Is he's back uh, more or less in in uh, in the good uh, uh, favor of his uh, of his wife. She seems to be okay with him now, and then uh, things are you know if 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 Jesse if Jesse might fly off the off the handle. But more importantly, good... though, if I may, please. Why is it so important for Walt in that scene to say you have to believe me? Why does yeah. he have? To believe him, I don't think it's so much because he's worried about. Let me tell you about your show. Sure. Um, <laughs> in Morocco, it's called. Um, it, it, first, that, that if if Jesse doesn't believe him, it's not the question that Jesse's going to kill him. It's that he will then have to kill Abs Jesse, and if he kills Jesse, then he is yeah. evil. And this this yeah. opened with Marie. Yeah. Marie, did you, did did everybody hear it? You're the devil. As they open the door <laughs> out to the patio, she's saying That's you're right. you're the devil. That's right. And if he's fully evil, yeah. because Jesse has completely become the moral compass, yeah. Jesse has to die. And you're absolutely right. If he says, Jesse, please, you gotta believe you tell me that you believe me, because what's the alternative? The alternative is he goes full on Heisenberg and just, you know. Well, I need to, oh, I like yeah. the distinction between the two characters, but also, um, this is a question that I saw on Reddit that I loved. What's worse for Jesse to find out about Walt's role in Jane's death, Walt poisoning mm. Brock, or Walt murdering Mike? Like, what would be the worst thing for Jesse to find this out? This is like, do you want the bullet in your knee, or your, <laughs> or your belly, or... Uh, <laughs> They're all three bad, but I gotta go with uh, the worst of all would be uh, him finding out about Jane. Him finding out about the fact that Jane, he could have saved Jane's life. I gotta go with that one. The first trans, the first major transgression. Yeah, not because it was first, but because because Brock got sick, but he but he but he lived. Right. And uh, Mike, Mike was a player. Mike, uh, Mike was in the game, and uh, and they're both bad. But worst of all was Jane. But Jane, although Jane, anyone who, 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 who attempts to cross, well, we talked about this when you were on the podcast, where I think if someone asked me what the show is about, I would say it is about a guy who is trying to establish significance. Yeah. That at every turn, whenever someone challenges him, he makes these prideful decisions. Yeah. Even when he gets drunk at that dinner party. Oh, the best. After <laughs> Hank's done with it, and then he's... And he has to tell him that, that there's no way that idiot could possibly yes. have done this master It's all cooking. about a guy yeah. who's trying to find significance, who clearly got trampled yeah. on his whole life, and yeah. I guess was awakened by, uh, by... But that's why he has to die. That's why Walt has to die, because in the end of all great Greek... Tragedy, which this really is in the yeah. best sense, hubris must be. Well, punished. then you have to tell. Okay, so in Julie, Morocco. what do you think? In Morocco or <laughs> wherever. <laughs> what do you think? What do you think uh, tread lightly means? I mean, it's obviously a threat, but that entire conversation that they had in the garage was so perfectly worded, I thought, on Walt's part. If, if they played that... It's the legal. Like, it's, it's not yeah. illegal. Nothing in there says... He just said, well, if you don't really know who I am, maybe... So... You yeah. should try like It's really a threat. Because he never admits it's a, it's it. It's a never threat. Admits he never admits it's a threat, it. But they but know. It's they very know. Veiled. Oh, crap. We got to go. Okay, listen. Uh, Are you serious? No, I did. Moves fast when you're excited. Uh, you, may, you guys probably noticed that we have all these posters uh, around the set. There's some incredible artwork around here. They were commissioned for the Breaking Bad Art Project. Uh, there are limited edition screen prints inspired by the show. You can see them all in Breaking Bad Alchemy, an interactive digital book which also includes exclusive interviews and interactive death timeline. And this book will update throughout death. the final episodes. There's death a death timeline. Time. A lot of people have died on the show. Uh, and <laughs> everyone in the audience tonight in our Oprah moment is getting a free download of the book, you guys. Uh, you at home can buy the book on the official uh, Breaking Bad merch uh, portal at BreakingBadStore.com. Coming up, Vince teases next week's episode, and no one in their right mind would miss that. We'll be right back. Say my name, Heisenberg.
Breaking Bad Alchemy, the extraordinary new multi-touch book that delivers the complete interactive legacy for the true Breaking Bad fan. Go deeper with interactive character and episode breakdowns, guides to all the music, vehicles, and a death timeline. With interactive quizzes, 360 degree set tours, exclusive interviews, and much more. Breaking Bad Alchemy. Available now on BreakingBadStore.com. Welcome back to Talking Bad. I'm here with Vince and Julie. Vince, what can you tell us about the ricin? Why go back for the ricin? Uh. Why buy an M60 machine gun? <laughs> why, uh, why uh, you know what? Um, uh, you got to think that that ricin uh, is going to come in handy uh, coming up. And, uh, you know, uh, I got to suspect he's got a use for it. You know? Wow, that, that was so, all so many words and yet no answer. <laughs> <laughs> I do not envy the position where you have all these answers in your head and you have to be very but careful. No, it, you have to tread lightly. Here's the thing, though. Does anyone really want to know in advance? Kind of, sort of, yeah. yeah. No, bit. we want to figure it out. We want just enough to figure it out. Just yeah. enough. Yeah. And, but let me ask this. An M60 can kill how many people? Well, you put 250 rounds through it, I guess... Unless you stacked them all up. Maybe. Just tell me how many people. <laughs> a lot. Well, here's okay. the deal. But how much can ricin kill? That uh, much? That much? Uh, well, yeah, that's a good question. I uh, mean, is he really? Are we looking at a small, but you have to be in that immediate vicinity. That much, I think, if you dosed it right, three or four people, I would think. Okay, so maybe. we're talking maybe about this two different deaths. This is getting really deaths. creepy, Julie Bowen. <laughs> Why? Did I hijack your show? I, I mean, warned you. No, not that part. The, the, like, how many people could you could theoretically kill with ricin? Uh, no one would suspect the Modern Family actress. <laughs> Um, so, just a mom. Here's the deal. There's so much. The security on this is insane for the last uh, eight episodes that we actually can't even show you a sneak peek of what happens because we don't want to e even potentially give anything away. There's only one person who would be able to walk us through this. So each week, Vince is going to deliver an exclusive tease in his own words about next week's episode that you can only see right here on the show. Uh, this is going to happen. Uh, th th so thank you very much for doing this yeah. every week. And what can you tell us about next episode? Well, remember in this first episode how uh, Lydia... Uh, comes into the car wash and she says to Walt, 68% and falling. Right. There's a lot of, you got to help me out here. Don't put me in a box. There's a lot of moving parts. Yeah. Well, in the uh, next episode, which is entitled Buried, look out for in those. A box. Uh, yeah, look out for those uh, moving parts that uh, Lydia's uh, warning Walt about. Well, I. I have to ask you because you're, you know, we have you on the show right now. Um, first of all, can I have a huge round of applause for this man who's created this show? Um, will you please, can you please tell us? It's very difficult to wrap up a show, especially one that is so precious to so many people, and, and it's very hard to say goodbye to a show, particularly after only five seasons. Are you, Vince Gilligan, satisfied with the way the show wraps up? Do you feel like people will be satisfied? I got to say yes. I got to I gotta hope that I'm right. I got to, you know, the, it, it, the audience is not uh, monolithic. Not everybody, you know, so there probably will be folks who are like, nah, I wanted to go a different way. I wanted to see yeah. something different. But I, my writers and I, we pleased ourselves. We, we were wow. sort of the first, uh, the first fans of the show. We satisfied ourselves. It, was, it took a lot <laughs> to satisfy us, but I'm hoping uh, folks uh, watching will be satisfied as well. I feel good about it. Well, personally. thank you very much, Vince. Thanks for watching Talking Bad. I'm my guest, Vince Gilligan, Julie Bowen. Catch you when Modern Family returns September 25th. Next week, my guest will be actor, comedian Bill Hader and a surprise Breaking Bad cast member. Stay tuned for an encore presentation of Breaking Bad. And tomorrow, go to amctalkingbad.com to check out the highlights from tonight's episode, as well as an all-new 15-minute bonus segment. I'm Chris Harvick at Nerdist. Have an A1 day. Welcome to the premiere of Talking Bad uh, and for Breaking Bad's final eight episodes. 
We're here to send this remarkable groundbreaking series off in style. Tonight we're talking to creator and executive producer of Breaking Bad, Mr. Vince Gilligan, and superfan Julie Bowen. I am Chris Hardwick, and this is Talking Bad. Vince, welcome to Talking Bad. All season long, we're going to have exclusive interviews with the cast, as well as celebrity super fans, right here on this couch to help us say vamanos to Breaking Bad. Uh, there's so much to get into. Uh, Hank punched Walt. Jesse made it rain, millionaire style. The cancer's back. There's a lot to get through. We're going to give you therapy so we can get through this together. To kick it off, please welcome creator and executive producer of Breaking Bad, Mr. Vince Gilligan, hey. and the Modern Family. Breaking Bad superfan Julie Bowen. Um, so, really quickly, uh, you were on our podcast last week, yeah. and we talked about this. I think you set up the entire series in the first five minutes of the first episode. Walt says, uh, chemistry is the science of change, growth, decay, transformation. Yeah. You I'd, want to talk a little bit about that? You know how what? He's uh, it, it, it really was. That was kind of uh, implicit uh, in the pitch and explicit when I pitched it to the, to the folks that I work for at AMC and at uh, Sony Television. I was selling them uh, that this was a show about transformation, about a guy changing from being the good guy to the bad guy. So you're right. In hindsight, that was kind of the... Uh, the uh, the position paper, as, as it were. And do then, and do you, episode. as Vince, still like Walt? Not so much, no. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's, uh, he's kind of a bad dude. I mean, that was the whole point of it all, but at a certain point, he's harder and harder to sympathize with, that's for sure. Yeah. So uh, let's talk about this episode that we saw a little bit earlier. What was the reason for starting with Hank and Walt uh, immediately with, with the confrontation and not holding that till the end. You know, we talked about it. My writers and I talked about uh, holding off uh, the realization on Walt's part that, uh, that Hank was onto him. But we figured, you know what? There's only seven after this one, and we got a, a heck of a lot of story left to tell. So might as well, uh, you know, end, end this episode on, on, on that moment that you saw. Julia, are you rooting for Hank? Or are you rooting for Walt? I'm literally trying to like mine the subtext of everything he's saying <laughs> to find out what's happening then. You were staring at him creepily. I know. I'm like, what does he mean? Decay. I got decay transformation. I I can go on forever. Walt, um, I root for Walt. Because I think, I, like you said, I, I'm sure as a writer and, and, and a creator, maybe you can as much anymore, but there is still something in that scene, in that confrontation. I'm thinking, I still want Walt to get away with it. I still want Walt to get away with it. I don't, don't I mean, he kind of represents something that's animal in all of us and greedy, and it may be just in me, but I'm sure everyone feels this way too. <laughs> But this, this, when she shows him that room last yeah. year, the the storage room full of money, and says, "How much is 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 too much?" All I was thinking was, "Well, let's figure out how he can spend it." You know, <laughs> and let's let's go on the vacation. Let's let's put our brains together. Yeah. Get Saul on this. Let's get them to Morocco or wherever they need to go. And there's something very exciting because no matter what. He was always the underdog in the beginning. Yeah. And, the, and, and you gave him the cancer back. Yeah. How much yeah. more of an underdog yeah. do you have to be? No, you're right. Well, let's talk about the cancer for a sec, because yeah. until he says to, at, at the end to Walt, I, can't, I mean, until he says to Hank, my cancer's back, no one knows that Walt's sick, right? I mean, he's keeping it a secret from the family. He's keeping it a secret. We we, we know. We know from him that Trip. shot of him with Trip. the, with right. the chemo. Yeah, yeah. 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 But, uh, no, he is keeping a secret. Because think back to last season, uh, to season 5A, as, as we call it, as we and the lawyers call it, uh, was, uh, was uh, he was uh, talking to his wife, and his wife said, I'm, I'm waiting for the cancer to come back. Right. So it's like, you got to think, if you're Walt, this is the last thing you want to you tell Skyler, because you don't want to see that, that look of relief in her, 